Hey everybody, Michael Snyder here, Pacific Northwest Weather Chasers. Today is January 2nd, coming up on 10.30 a.m. here. Checking out the current satellite imagery here, you can see the parent low still spinning off from the Gulf of Alaska here and spreading cold air our way across the Pacific Ocean. These are going to be in the form of some moderate to heavy showers as they come through today. An outside chance of a lightning strike anywhere in western Washington and western Oregon as the day progresses. And you can see the main front is pushing on into eastern Washington and it's over the Oregon Cascades just crossing now. There's some warmer air getting into eastern Washington right now, but that should be temporary. It should just be a few hours and drop down below freezing. It looks like it's just above freezing in Spokane now and the stu it's still snowing there though. So that should drop down below freezing later and we'll look into more detail on that in a minute here. Checking out the Doppler here, you can see we've got some showers off the coast. That's, those are the cold air cumulus going to be moving through today. Um, prize for today would be, you know, look off to the west and southwest. And if you see dark clouds, maybe you'll get an ice pellet shower, snow pellets, some light snow, maybe even a stray lightning strike. Um, down in Portland, they still have a flood, flood watch going on, and that's going to end tonight most of the heavy rain is out of that region now and this is just kind of letting things drain out winter storm warnings are going on for the cascades until 6 p.m tomorrow night all this cold air cumulus will slam into the terrain and just keep the snow going up and down the cascades so heads up there for past travel over i-90 highway 12 97 26 highway 20 you know heads up watch the pass closures for sure because it's very active up there right now and looking on into eastern washington there we've got winter weather advisory or a winter storm warning for all the areas now except for the east slopes of the north cascades and they're probably getting their own snow of that probably just not meeting criteria there um and if we look a little bit closer let's let's dive down into pendleton here i think this wind High wind warning is going on 70 miles per hour until 4 p.m. this afternoon. So those winds are still are going to be going here if they're not already. We can take a look at some of those observations here in a minute. I've got that ready to go also. So yeah, it's still pretty active going on. And we're going to take a look at what's coming. Another snow chance for portions of western Washington on Wednesday night into Thursday. So stay with me here and we'll go over that in a minute. First of all, let's check out what's going on currently so let's go ahead and just look into east washington really quick because spokane two to three inches Coeur d'Alene, idaho two to three you can see as you get further east kellogg three to four and most of the basin uh, less as per usual the higher terrain more of course cascades more uh plain ellensburg yakima could also see some snow and then high winds calling for you can see it's got a map here 40 45 Get a little bit further south, 55, 60, up to 65 miles per hour. Drifting and blowing snow. And the weekly outlook is for Thursday and Friday, we have chances for more snow in eastern portions of Washington and Oregon. So plan for dry, uh, winter driving conditions there. And Pendleton also too, check out the strong winds, mostly in the higher terrain, of course. Talks about what to do in case of a power outage. This is actually really important. The heat sources, um, you know, make sure your generators are far enough away from your windows. You know, watch out for carbon monoxide sources in your house, no barbecues, things like that. You know, it, it seems like common sense, but people die of it every single year when you got power outages during the winter and check on neighbors also. Also in the backcountry, watch out avalanche warnings. There's so much snow up there. We really need to be careful, really anywhere in the Cascades, east or west slopes, heads up for avalanche. Um, danger there all the way into northeast Washington higher terrain in e eastern Oregon a lot of snow so heads up there all right now let's look at we're looking at the her here really quick I just wanted to look at the temperatures in Spokane there you can see them warm up a bit during the day today and then boom it kind of drops below early afternoon and stays below and you can see the temperatures fall through eastern Washington and eastern Oregon there. So this going above freezing is a temporary thing for the eastern portions of the state. And the thunderstorm potential here, you can see the Cape dancing around on the coastline there. Let me bring this up a bit here. This is the Her also. You can see some of that Cape getting to the Puget Sound there this afternoon, mainly up north. It moves to the Puget Sound a bit there, but you can see the coastal regions that are most active as far as uh, thunderstorm potential here. And going on into 
This is on into Tuesday morning. Here it goes. And there's probably going to be another chance Tuesday also, if I was looking at that correctly. But we can look at that tomorrow also. Now we're going to look at we're going to look at the future here and this potential for another winter storm to impact portions of Western Washington. So check out the temperatures. We're going into Tuesday now. This is Tuesday afternoon. Going into Tuesday evening, you can see Bellingham is now below freezing. Seattle, a chilly 35. You can see Seattle now dropped to freezing. You can see some cold air seeping into the region here. Wednesday morning, warms up a bit during the day, then it falls back down that night. Seattle below freezing there by midnight on Wednesday night. You can see the warm front approaching. The wind's starting to go southeast there, and then we got southwesterlies on the south side of that warm front which marks the boundary of the warmer air, but you can see that freezing temperature all the way up to Quileute, Aberdeen. And if we go into the future here, we're here at 15Z, it's still below freezing in Seattle and well below freezing for Bellingham. So places north of Seattle, Bellingham, you can see the interior starting to warm up, the southwest interior on the coast, of course. And look at Oregon at this point, a lot of warm air flooding into the region there, upper 40s. And right about late morning Thursday, Seattle goes above freezing. And then you'll notice Bellingham is still below freezing. Then they jump above also. Uh, the GFS was yesterday was hitting at more, more of a battle up there, a transition between some northeasterlies fighting that warmer air. But we'll look at the GFS here in a second. And we saw that Seattle was below freezing until 15Z on Thursday morning. So let's check out when the precipitation comes according to the North American model here. You can see it rolling in here. This is the warm front. The boundary of the warm air is just south of that main shot of precipitation there. It looks like it starts about 9Z for Seattle. 12Z, we've got some precip over the top of it. So that could be in the form of light snow or even some freezing rain. We're going to have to see just how the thermal profile sets up there. When you have um, warmer air above and cooler air below, you, you tend to be more freezing rain. But if the column is more uh, freezing or just about freezing, you can, it'll be snow. So then you can see by 15Z, where it's still below freezing in Bellingham, it's, I believe, has it warmed up in Seattle at 15Z? Did we look at that again? Let me check that, double check here. Oh, 15Z, yeah, still below freezing in Seattle. So you can see we've got three hours of precip falling there in Seattle. Bellingham, Seattle areas north, still below freezing at this point. So we have to watch for freezing rain potential as this warm air pushes in. And we'll check on that more tomorrow because today is Monday, tomorrow's Tuesday. We'll have a better idea with the models. And yeah, so this could be, you could get some accumulation with this too. Um, this is morning, just not that far from commute time. And by this point, Seattle's warmed above freezing here. Bellingham's still below freezing. They're still gonna get some frozen precipitation in some sort. Maybe Skagit, Whatcom County is still. And then you can see it, according to the NAM, it all warms up and you can see a stronger frontal system move through the area there. So let's go ahead and take a look at, this is the GFS, the wide view here. Let's go ahead and start now. You can see our big low pressure over the Gulf of Alaska or diffuse big low pressure, not necessarily deep, but that's streaming cold air into the region here and causing all our winter weather for the Cascades and Eastern Washington, Oregon, off into Idaho tonight. And as we see, we go into Tuesday morning here. You can see there's a lot of cold air, a nice Arctic high built up over Canada. We're just not tapping it in the region right now. So then we go into Wednesday morning and we saw that the temperature settled back down. Some of this air starts seeping back into the region here. And as we go further in Wednesday morning, you can see the next low pressure system out here marked by this warm front. You can see it clearly defined warm front here. Easterly winds southwest on the south side. So as we put that into motion, you see that start to encroach on the Oregon coast there and start to warm up the Oregon coast that's eventually coming towards Seattle, but not yet. You can see that battle going on. This low is deepening out here, pulling offshore winds through Western Washington. And as we go a little bit further, we saw that we're still below freezing in Seattle at 6Z. 9Z, we're still below freezing. That low is pretty deep out there, just south of the Queen Charlotte at this point. And 12Z, still below freezing in Seattle. You can see it warming up in Southwest Washington. And then finally, Seattle's right on the freezing line there, and then it goes above. So that might be a messy transition coming on Thursday. We're going to have to watch this very closely. This is the GFS up close here. Let's see what this says. So Wednesday morning, 
Here's Wednesday afternoon, Seattle drops to freezing. On Thursday morning, well, the ZFS keeps us a bit warmer. So it has us freezing only until about 03 Zulu on Thursday. And you can see Bellingham stays much colder there. Look at 22 in Bellingham by 12Z. So we need to get this model discrepancy worked out tomorrow. And because we've got big, big differences here, the Seattle is still below freezing on the NAM. You can see it's 45 here. The warm front has taken over the region on the GFS versus the NAM where it still has Seattle below freezing. And Bellingham there, 24 degrees, and you can still see that northeast wind going on. This is what I was talking about, that GFS has that battle between some cold continental air and that warm front. And then you can see a warm 27, 31. That would be a messy transition up there for Bellingham, Whatcom County area, southern BC. You can see how they're very cold still too. And I don't even have to mention what's going on in the mountainous regions up here in British Columbia and the east side. Any precip that gets over there is going to be frozen for sure. And you can see how, I mean, even in the future, Bellingham is still just very marginally above freezing for a bit and then drops back below. So, you know, in the wake of that system, you can see we get a little bit chilly again. See how it gets down into the upper 20s. You can see some more cold air. It gets entrenched across the region. So stuff to still watch for the future here. And some things are hinting at um, some of the oscillations in the oceans are hinting at a, a return to potential cold weather for the end of January or second half of January. So we're going to watch that closely too. So anyway, uh, you guys, thanks for stopping by today. And we'll take another look at this system tomorrow and we'll visit some of the snow totals and for the Cascades, mainly Eastern Washington and Oregon. And we'll look at these systems coming up and we'll go over into some ocean oscillation patterns and try to see what's coming up in our future for Pacific Northwest. So thanks for stopping by. Bye guys. Please like and subscribe and get a lot of good comments and a lot of good feedback. So thanks a lot everybody.